We're into round four of the FIDE World Cup, and so far I haven't even mentioned the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. So let's look at his game from today. He's playing against Radoslav Wojtaszek from Poland. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon. Links down there and in the video description. So what's happened to Carlsen so far? Well, he was seeded through into the second round, as were many of the top players. And he cruised through rounds two and three, wasn't pressed at all. Of course, Wojtaszek is of a different calibre. He's rated, well, you can see here, 26.91. I mean, a really consistent performer over the years. Having said that, Carlsen does have a very good record against him, so this is not going to be easy for a Polish player. So here, of course, normal line of the Catalan is to take on c4, but um, those lines, well, white often gets a, a slight advantage, and they're pretty steady, and I think that suits... Uh, Wojtaszek's style actually with white you know he likes a slight advantage as a classical player likes pressing but Carlson preferred here to keep the tension and play something a little bit unusual advancing the a pawn so queen c2 good move what white wants to do is to prepare the break e4 and this is pretty standard and um, yep comes straight away well here what black does not want to play is take on e4 this is exactly what white wants white has a beautiful center um, can use the the e5 square soon rook d1 and knight e5 really nice position but yeah that's not black's idea so bishop b7 from carlson just solidifying the d5 point and of course if the pawn is pushed then the knight drops back to d7 rook d1 seems reasonable getting this rook out and knight a6 so a very tense situation in the middle if the pawns are exchanged here then black will be able to use the c file um and here well Wojtaszek decides to close the position with e5, which is reasonable. And here he took on d5. Um, another way of playing this for white is to play a3 to shut that knight out of the game. But you have to contend with c5, and the position kind of blows open there, um, if or has the potential to. If pawn takes pawn, then bishop takes pawn. And white has yet to develop. This is the problem. So that's why uh, Wojtaszek took on d5. And here this is a big crossroads for black. Because you know you can recapture with either pawn. And you can also play knight b4. Um, knight b4 played by Carlsen. And that pushes the queen to uh, perhaps not such a great position. b1. So white pieces, you know, on the queen side, a bit locked in. And here is a major decision from Carlton. He's thought for almost six minutes here. You could play knight takes. And if knight e4, so that threatens a knight g5, move h6. But then you're going to play c5 and break out. But I think the move that Carlson was probably concerned about was queen e4. Transferring the queen to the king side and then knight e4. And that's dangerous. So c takes d5. Carlson keeps it pretty regular. So now basically what we've got on the board is a pawn structure that you might see typically from the French defence. But it's not exactly like a French defence because that minor piece on g2 normally would be on this diagonal. And if that bishop could transfer to this diagonal, then I think white would be doing very well. But, yeah, it's not so simple because here, well, not only is that bishop slightly misplaced, but white has yet to free the queenside pieces. So, bishop a6 from Carlson. So, yeah, just as in the French defence, if this 
bishop can reach this diagonal, then that does give black counterplay. Knight e3, rook c8. So it's about time that that knight was pushed back. And yeah, that little rearrangement of the pieces, the knight did stand on a6. Now it's on c6, a much better square. So that little shuffle over the last few moves certainly uh, benefits Carlson. Nevertheless, white's position is very secure here. Center is secure for the moment anyway. Um, I mean, I would assess this position as just slightly better for white, but it, it's very tense. At some moment, black is going to have to break out. So here, what's the breakout move? Well, it's going to be f6. Um, so, for example, if well, the move we would like to play is h4 to start the initiative on the king side, but then f6 takes takes, and you know there is a little bit of pressure here. Um, once again, these pieces don't look too clever on the queen side. Black certainly has counterplay there, so that's why b3 was played in order to perhaps defend this pawn chain by the bishop. F6 is still possible, actually, but Carlson went for b5. And just gaining territory on this side of the board. And, well, if the position opens on the queen side, then Carlson's going to be pretty happy. So, a4. <clears throat> and now here, uh, quite a big crossroads, actually. Carlson took um, quite a committal decision to play bishop e2 and exchanged off that bishop. Um, obviously, we'll look at that in a second. But another plan is to play more slowly with queen b6. And then bring this bishop round to b6 with some pressure here. Um, I mean, white can withstand that, but it's kind of an interesting idea. And, you know, maybe play for f6 then. In any case, bishop e2 played. And that, I mean, this is an interesting move because... The rook <clears throat> really ideally wants to play to e1, but that's simply not possible because the d-pawn drops. So rook d2 played, and then the exchange, but you can see the rook well, blocks that bishop. Pieces tread on each other's toes a little bit here, and that gives Carlson the chance to break with pawn to f6. And now the position is really, really starting to boil. Um, Carlson opening up the f-file while that bishop is loose and these pieces stuck on the queen side. So, for example, if pawn takes pawn, there's actually a lovely tactic here. Knight takes pawn. So, knight takes bishop, check, threatened. Um, and if rook takes, then bishop takes, and that slices through here, and there's all kinds of tactics going on in this position. This is uh, actually very good for black. So after f6, f6 just played, we had bishop g4. Good move. And if pawn takes pawn, then bishop takes pawn check, and it starts to get really messy. So Carlson played f5. Now, if the bishop's tacked, if it retreats, then bishop takes pawn, and suddenly this is tremendous for black. Superb initiative. I mean, really, you know, here we go. We've said it before, but that queen on b1 is really in Siberia, and, well, black's queen is in the hot spot, and it's quite a different story. This is a tremendous attack for black. Um, so after f5, knight takes f5 by uh, Wojtaszek, and this is just really unclear. Um, that bishop looking down at the pawn on f7. Also, there's potential to come in here. Now, if Carlson wants a draw, he could play g6, and that would pretty much force a draw straight away. You can see that would be a perpetual check. I mean, white can play on in this position. <clears throat> of 
bishop b2 with the idea of then swinging the queen over that's actually not so clear but Carlson had uh, <clears throat> a nine minute think here and came up with a counter sacrifice bishop takes pawn so this is a tremendous um, cut and thrust in, in this game um, and here pawn takes bishop plate I mean white could play like this, rook d1, and just bring that bishop out. Um, with hindsight, that is probably a better way to play, because it, it's actually very hard for for white, for excuse me, for black, to break through. And in, if if white has time to switch over to the king side, it could be pretty dangerous. But uh, Wojtaszek, after a 23 and a half minute think, took on h4. Remember, this is classical chess. And here Carlson took on h4 with the queen, which looks very natural. In fact, knight takes pawn looks like, well, according to my computer, this is a winning move. Black for the moment is a piece down, but this is threatened. Uh, the queen is coming out. It is really dangerous. If bishop takes rook, knight check, and queen h4 is actually winning for black, I mean, this is hard to calculate, of course, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot more to it than that. So I'm just sketching out a few variations. But, well, queen takes pawn is also very dangerous. Um, here, check was played. If bishop takes, then knight takes d4. And this is actually winning for black. So the queen tries to join in, but knight f3 is, is deadly, actually. So bishop e6 check played, king h8, and what uh, Wojtaszek has done is buy his, himself some time. So the queen comes out, still a threat here, um, potential threat here. The queen also can perhaps join in the defence, but Carlson strikes, gives up a piece, hits the queen, it's incredibly dangerous for both sides. Knight f3 check, and this has to be taken. Otherwise, uh, black's, black's queen is, is coming into the position. And don't forget, this one is completely out of play. So the queen is given up, but, okay, let's count the material. It's rook and two bishops against the queen. But the king is exposed. There are potential targets in the position. And here, actually, h6 would be a cool move just to give the king uh, an escape square. Um, but uh, Carlson went for rook f8. Now, it's very, very tricky. Bishop b7. And Carlsen thought that he was actually winning with this move. It is so easy for white to go wrong here. So the rook in the corner is attacked. So the natural move to defend it, bishop b2, loses to queen g5. Double attack. There's also rook b1, loses to queen g6 check. Double attack. There's also rook a two but then queen e7 hits the bishop threatens queen e1 check double attack but carlson in his haste overlooked rook d a2 and that just about holds everything together now the players are running short of time um, and it, it's such a difficult position queen f7 hits the bishop Bishop g2, queen takes b3. So the position still really hasn't stabilised. Bishop b3. And here Carlson played rook d8, and he offered a draw, which was accepted. Remember, both players short of time. Well, that, as we know from Magnus, is unusual. He rarely offers a draw. Um certainly not in in positions that are very unclear but 
I think this shows that Magnus has great intent in this tournament. It's a it's a pragmatic decision. He knows the draw is okay because he has the white pieces tomorrow in the second classical game. So he he'll basically consider that the odds are in his favor. Whereas to stake everything on this one game, he obviously considered could be a mistake. Um I I should say that uh, Wojtoszek actually accepted the draw offer. Um, he didn't know who was better. Uh, perhaps neither player really understood what was going on in this position. In fact, the computers think that the game should be roughly level. But there are so many tricks here. It, it, it's such a delicate balance. So let, let me show a few variations. Um, for example, Rook E2. Let's try and activate the Rooks. Then I think... It feels like it's the best policy to exchange rooks uh, because then the queen has has more targets. You know, there's a loose rook. Um, and now, for example, h6, let's just give the king some luft here. Okay, rook c1, the rook activates. Now, if white can actually organize his pieces and get an attack against the king, then that could be nasty. But queen d3, well, that covers um, the e4 square, covers this diagonal. That's important. And now, well, the game could end like this. Rook c5, check. Here, check. That's perpetual check, etc. Or if black tries to push this pawn, the rook goes behind. Here, bishop d5 b2, okay, the threat is to queen, and then bishop here, and actually white is holding this position. So, for example, check. This is just a draw by perpetual check again, like this, and so on. And actually here, well, white uh, white is holding. Black can't make progress. If queen takes pawn, rook takes. That is potentially risky for black to play, because, you know, if... White, as I said, manages to organize that the rook comes down here, then yeah, could could be unpleasant. I mean I'm I'm sure this is probably equal as well, but anyway. Still incredibly complicated, but just to repeat, rook d8, Carlton offered a draw, which was accepted. Incredibly tense game, but Carlson obviously missed opportunities there, as I've shown. Um Will he be beating himself up? Don't know. I think both players will probably be happy with the draw, actually. You know, it's such a complicated position. Very easy to go wrong. Uh, a draw, probably, yeah, probably quite, quite happy, both sides. So there we go. Classical Game 2 comes tomorrow. Um, like I said, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Remember, it's... Uh, there's discount on all merch on the power play chess online shop so if you want to get your octopus knight t-shirts or your queen in siberian mug then uh, mug much mug then do check out uh, the online store and you'll find the discount i'll put it in the commentary you'll also find it in the video description sale lasts for just a few more days thanks for watching